it was a long time ago, and yet it's all just incredibly familiar. Like it was, you know, all the memories of, of working here come flooding back, and it was, yeah, it was like it was last week. It is a weird experience because you met them as kids and now some of them are married and they've got kids of their own and it, my memory of them is locked, is sort of locked in. Obviously they've grown up. He's got a serious, I mean, apart from his name, which is a bit it's a serious black, is a wonderful name, is there's a cool about uh, serious that I think the fans attach to. But he's a good guy at the end of the day. Back in California, I had a dentist and his son was a huge fan of Harry Potter. And we met at a campsite. At Thanksgiving, I used to take the kids to this campsite in California. And um, uh, a, a lot of people actually refer to it as glamping because it wasn't quite, it wasn't quite roughing it in tents, but it was these, uh, these little cabins. And I, had, and I ran into this dentist and he said, oh, my son is over there, Tom. Would you, would you go over and just introduce yourself and say hello? He said, because he's, he's a huge Harry Potter fan and he loves Sirius Black and it would, like, it would just make his day. So I said, sure, I can go over there. And there were a couple of kids sitting around a sort of, uh, really on a bench around a sort of campfire. And I walked up to Tom and he looked at me and I looked at him and I said, hi, Tom. I said, I'm Sirius Black. And the kid at the end of the thing said, no, you're not, you're Commissioner Gordon. <laughs> the great thing about the Potter experience was that a lot of, a lot of kids couldn't see the type of movies that I made. And then my fan base was then suddenly it shifted to, you know, from like four years old and up. So a whole new kind of fan base opened, uh, opened up for you. The kids you know, Rupert, Emma and, and uh, Dan were just extraordinary young people. Um, and I was impressed by their sort of commitment and professionalism at such a young age. One of my favorite scenes that always, always stuck with me was the boggart in Azkaban. I think it's Azkaban, yeah. Um, with the whole thing with the wardrobe. The imagination behind it is just incredible. That you could disarm the boggart with laughter and humor. That scene has always, has always sort of stuck with me. It was a long time ago, and yet it's all just incredibly familiar. Like it was, you know, all the memories of, of working here come flooding back, and it was, yeah, it was like it was last week. It is a weird experience because you met them as kids, and now some of them are married and they've got kids of their own. And it, my memory of them is locked, is sort of locked in. Obviously they've grown up. He's got a 
serious, I mean, apart from his name, which is a bit serious black, is a wonderful name, is there's a cool about uh, serious that I think the fans attach to. But he's a good guy at the end of the day. Back in California, I had a dentist and his son was a huge fan of Harry Potter. And we met at a campsite. At Thanksgiving, I used to take the kids to this campsite in California. And um, uh, a, a lot of people actually refer to it as glamping because it wasn't quite, it wasn't quite roughing it in tents, but it was these, uh, these little cabins. And I, had, and I ran into this dentist and he said, oh, my son is over there, Tom. Would you, would you go over and just introduce yourself and say hello? He said, because he's, he's a huge Harry Potter fan and he loves Sirius Black and it would, like, it would just make his day. So I said, sure, I can go over there. And there were a couple of kids sitting around a sort of, uh, really on a bench around a sort of campfire. And I walked up to Tom and he looked at me and I looked at him and I said, hi, Tom. I said, I'm Sirius Black. And the kid at the end of the thing said, no, you're not, you're Commissioner Gordon. <laughs> the great thing about the Potter experience was that a lot of, a lot of kids couldn't see the type of movies that I made. And then my fan base was then suddenly it shifted to, you know, from like four years old and up. So a whole new kind of fan base opened, uh, opened up for you. The kids, you know, Rupert, Emma and, and uh, Dan were just extraordinary young people. Um, and I was impressed by their sort of commitment and professionalism at such a young age. One of my favorite scenes that always, always stuck with me was the boggart in Azkaban. I think it's Azkaban, yeah. Um, with the whole thing with the wardrobe the imagination behind it is just incredible. That you could disarm the bogger with laughter and humor. That scene has always, has always sort of stuck with me. touching it is strange it's slightly disembodying coming back um because it's been for me probably over God knows how many years let's 11 years so a lot has changed one of the highlights of my part was when i had to pretend to be hermione pretending to be bellatrix so that meant I got to not only act with, you know, Dan and um, Rupert looking at me as if I was their age, which was really fun, but also I really got to know Emma because she gave me tips on how to be Hermione and her. really touching it is strange it's slightly disembodying coming back um because it's been for me probably over God knows how many years let's 11 years so a lot has changed one of the highlights of my part was when i had to pretend to be hermione pretending to be bellatrix so that meant I got to not only act with, you know, Dan and um, 
Rupert looking at me as if I was their age, which was really fun. But also I really got to know Emma because she gave me tips on how to be Hermione and her. Well, I don't know if fans resonate with my character any more than any of the other characters. I think the entire encyclopedic landscape of it all has burnt itself into the fans' minds and mine. We were all fans. One of the reasons the films turned out so well, I think, is that all of us on the set were as big of fans as you could find outside the studio. We all got the books as soon as they came out. We all devoured them. We all knew that something special was going on. Obviously, I had the best hair, and uh, I had some rather snazzy outfits. If there's anything memorable about Lucius Malfoy and why he sticks in people's minds, is we all have a terror that we might be that desperate. He's not only deeply unpleasant and uh, a bully, but it's because he's so insecure, and he is absolutely begging for approval and status all the time. He's desperate, he's putting on airs and graces, but really, he hates himself and he's terrified of everyone. And I think there is something that echoes and scares people because they see some part of the worst idea of themselves in him. God, what didn't I love about portraying Lucius? Uh, first of all, I liked the fact that when they put the wig on in order to keep the hair straight, I put my head back, I'd look in the mirror, there was an instant character. Looking down my nose at everyone, didn't even have to do any acting. Um, and then I loved that he had a journey. He started off as this incredibly arrogant, supercilious, terrible bully, which he remained, and he ended up this broken, alcoholic husk of a shell of a man, rejected by his lord, by rect rejected by his wife and son, and uh, with no real future, just the money to protect him, as ever. I worked backwards from wanting to explain to the audience why Draco was such a bully at school, where that level of anger and frustration in him comes from. So I wanted to create a world where uh, there was no love in his household and he, the worst was expected of him. He was never given any praise. And then I wanted from the outside in to make the most annoying person you could ever meet. I wanted you to hear his voice and for the hackles to go up on the back of your neck just wanted it to be, every second of his existence, to be like fingernails on a blackboard. Oh, the Bertie Botts flavors. I quite like the disgusting ones, because the other ones taste like sweets. But when you eat something that tastes like condensed sewage, you know that you're in a special place. If I could pick one magic element from the films in my life, wouldn't mind a time turner. It's all been a great adventure. Wouldn't mind doing it all again. I didn't know any spells. I didn't really get to do any spells. And when Dobby uh, was presented with a sock and it said in the script that I lift my wand and I get knocked off my feet, I remember turning to someone, a grip, going, do you know a spell? And he went, no, mate. I said, nothing. I don't know what I meant to do a spell. He said, I think Avada Kedavra or something. So I started to say Avada Kedavra, and, uh, and I got knocked off my feet. I got a mailbag from thousands and thousands of people. People are still annoyed about it. How dare you, you were going to kill Harry Potter. I didn't know. I'm sorry, I didn't know. Just let it be.